as a Filipino, it is important to know our history. However, some information is not included in our history class. White Russians was a term used to designate all the Russians who were opposed to the Bolshevik Revolution, spearheaded by Lenin. It was the end of the Russian Civil War. The Soviet Red Armies had routed and crushed the opposing white Russians. Fear for their lives and fueled by anti-communist sentiment, the white Russians became refugees. For 20 years, white Russians live in China as refugees and migrants. Civil War broke out in China in the late 30s. Japanese invaded China and China went back to its order of civil war. The white Russians began to appeal to the International Refugee Office. Stateless and in need of help, they sought assistance from many countries who could take them, as most of the country is busy for reconstruction from World War II. So the IRO launched an appeal and the countries were busy with their own reconstruction. None of them replied to the call of IRO. At this time, only one country stood up and declared its borders open to the refugees, the Philippines. Even if Philippines is barely independent and still recovering from World War II, they began to immigrate on January 1949 and so some 6,000 white Russians found themselves in a camp in Tubabao under the President Elpidio Carino governance. I left Shanghai with mom on the 26th of February in 49 and I don't know how many days it took on board the ship, probably about six days or so. In a very pragmatic Filipino spirit, Makers at the time they all escaped. We've got the old hospital structure on the island of Babao, built by the Americans for the landing. Well, instead of having the structure go to waste, we might as well recycle it into a refugee camp. But unfortunately, when the white Russians arrived in Giwan, and particularly into Babao Island, nothing was left except for some pavements. Noon, ma gawin ng once President Carino visited the refugees in their camp and noticed of our wire fence around the perimeter, he immediately had the fence taken down. There will be no walls between the Filipinos and the Russians. Russians live in Tababao for two years in what they describe as paradise. They slowly integrated themselves into the community, learning how to fish, hosting cultural performances, teaching the children piano and ballet, and becoming regular pictures in otherwise coastal provincial life. You had to get accustomed to a different kind of life. And for the elderly people, it was difficult for us youngsters. France had the particularity towards the end to say all the woman-headed households with patients who were suffering from tuberculosis would be accepted by France. And the able-bodied men went to Sydney. And by 1950, the amendments to the bill was finally passed. So by 1951, Nolan's promise finally materialized. And finally, the people were able to live their new lives. The Russians eventually resettled in the United States, Australia, Europe, and South America, this time more permanently. The settlement in Tubaba was later forgotten and no traces were left except for the plaque. Tubaba Island stands as a reminder of tolerance and compassion for all of us that anybody can do good to their fellow no matter how small.